The real Peaky Blinders were the hooligans of Birmingham in the 1890s. Before that, they'd been called sloggers and they were involved in slogging gangs. And the term sloggers and slogging gangs continued to use throughout the 1890s as well. By the early 20th century, the Peaky Blinders had disappeared. They fought with belt buckles, with metal tip boots, with fire irons, with knives. They fought with handkerchiefs that were filled with stones and wrapped up. The name Peaky Blinder is not mentioned until 1890. In the early part of that year, a young man, an innocent man, was in a pub, got picked on by a gang, he went to go home, he was violently assaulted, his head hit the pavement, they attacked him with belt buckles, and he was in fear of his life. He managed to get up and eventually find safety, although afterwards he was so badly hurt, he ended up having an operation on his head and staying in hospital. That incident was reported locally, but there was no mention of the name of the gang. But a few days later, in a number of national publications, including one in London, they reported a letter had been sent to the Birmingham press stating the attack had been carried out by the small Heath Peaky Blinders. That's the first mention that we get of the name Peaky Blinder. The idea that the Peaky Blinders took their name from their flat caps into the peaks of which they had sewn razor blades is a false one. It's a myth. There is no evidence at all to support it. My belief is that the name Peaky Blinder came from the fashion for wearing flat caps which started to take over with young men in Birmingham and Manchester and other big towns and cities from the 1880s. Before that, working class men wore billycocks, a type of bowl hat, and older men continued to wear them. But these lads wore flat caps with short peaks, hence peakies. The response in working class neighbourhoods where people were scared of the Peaky Blinders in the 1890s. One of them was my great grandfather, Edward Derrick, who pinched a basket carriage. That was a, a big basket on three wheels. They caused mayhem where they were allowed to, and they picked on the innocent. I've got no respect for my great grandfather because he would turn into a wife beater. My great great grandfather, his father John, was a slogger in the 1880s. These weren't men to be respected. They were meant to be looked down upon for the way that they treated the innocent and treated women very often. The series is beautifully shot and atmospheric and there's bits and pieces of history that are brought together and be melded and that's good drama. Uh, one of the things for me as a historian that stands out is the strong women and I would congratulate the writer on that. I come from a long line of strong women. In Birmingham we don't say it's your parents house. If you're working class you say it's our mums and your mum is the most important person and the mother of your mum is the second most important person. So one of the great strengths I think of the series has been to show the strength of working class women. Birmingham did have a Northern Irish police chief. His name was Sir Charles Horton Rafter. He came from Belfast and he did recruit a lot of Irish policemen but not Protestants from Belfast, mainly from the west of Ireland where he had served as a member of the Royal Irish Constabulary. He was a very strong man. He came to Birmingham in 1899, and one of the reasons many people think at the time he was appointed was to put down the Peaky Blinders, which he did within a few years. But there was no real police corruption on a large scale, other than for street bookmakers like my granddad and others, we used to pay the coppers five shillings a week, 25 pence a week to the policemen on the beat, because they tried to arrest you. So for that fee, not all of them took it, but for that fee they would come around and tell us when we were going to be pinched. So you would put up a man who had never been pinched before as a dummy. By the early 1900s, the Peaky Blinders are gone. Why had they gone? Strict policing, better policing. Sir Charles Horton Rafter was probably responsible for that in Birmingham. Stronger sentences when people were brought up for violence. But also, I think, changing social conditions. More and more people were now growing up who'd been to school and had discipline instilled in them. Schooling did, didn't become compulsory until the early 1880s. And on top of that, in many poor areas, socially minded vicars, particularly from High Church of England parishes, were setting up youth clubs and especially boxing clubs. And I think there's a book waiting to be written and a programme waiting to be made about the impact of boxing self-discipline and self-respect from boxing on the decline of gang warfare in Birmingham and Manchester and London in the early 20th century. 
the Peaky Blinders series has had a positive impact because lots of people want to know more about Birmingham and its history and it really is exciting for people from Birmingham and I think from the West Midlands as a whole to, to hear and see about people from our city. It's beautifully shot. The role of women really is true to life. And there's, there's bits and pieces of historical fact that have been brought together from a, different periods. But I think it is very, very important that people don't run away with the image that Birmingham was on the edge of revolution, that Birmingham was like a mafia-run city, and that there was sex and violence going on in every street every day. Poorer people were remarkably respectable and strove for respectability. I'm proud to come from Backstreet Brummies who were like that.